Yeah, no, definitely the next time we have we have Jake on or or someone, we we gotta like we gotta duct tape his ass to the chair. <laughs> like he, it's like no, Jake, you're not allowed to to move. You gotta you gotta chill, dude. <laughs> And you gotta be in one spot so that the microphone kind of, sort of picks you up. Yeah, uh, it, it helps. Yeah, it definitely helps. I mean, that's kind of, kind of how all this this works. <laughs> Sometimes I, when it works. Yeah, I, I, when it works. Yeah, when we're not having technical difficulty, like my pop filter falling the fuck off the thing, that was not fun. No te- technical difficulties today. How uh, y'all doing? At least not that I'm aware of yet. <laughs> Yeah, like there's like like you know, I'm always afraid that at the end of the recording, there's going to be something wrong. Like I'm going to be listening to it back to edit something out, <laughs> or like I'm adding in like the uh, you know the intro and the outro, and I I notice a blip or like a a fucking artifact on the audio, and it's like it's Satan yeah. spelling out you know <laughs> for some reason he's spelling Kill out the child, boys and the frogs. <laughs> Turn, Turn him gay. gay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Satan commands it. <laughs> but yeah, it's like I'm always afraid he's gonna be like like for some reason it's it's a demon voice and he's spelling out like reciprocating or something. Just <laughs> some random stupid word. Right, you know what? That might be the best podcast ever if that happens. Uh, it, honestly, if, if I ever get that, I might just leave it in. Like, yeah, like, I don't hey. know. This is uh, Beelzebub. He's a friend of ours. Yeah, yeah, he's a friend of the podcast. He's a great guy. You know, misunderstood a bit. Ominous ass music in the background. Yeah. I don't know where it came from, honestly. It wasn't there when we were recording, but hey, here it is now. Oh, man. I fucking love the way they did the Doom soundtrack. Yes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right. So we, we, we do have a topic today, guys. We have yeah, like yeah. A, a bit of a plan. Uh, we're not completely uh, directionless here. We're going to talk about sure Black Panther. Right, okay. Um, anyway, <laughs> like I said, we're going to talk about Black yeah. Panther. Did you, see, did you see this movie yet? Because you should have, because it's I, out and it's fucking awesome. It is amazing. Like, All right, guys, seriously, if you, ha- if you haven't seen it yet, <clears throat> um, go ahead and pause the podcast, stop the podcast right this second. We're going to yep. give, give you a few seconds of silence, and you can go you know, watch the fucking movie and then come on back. There you go. Okay, yep. there's a few seconds of silence. Now, seen the movie? No? Well, oh well. Luke, please don't set my table on fire. It's not. Actually, set the table on fire. That's fine. You paid for the table. <laughs> don't set the rest of the equipment on fire. Thank you. Now. <clears throat> uh, but Black Panther. Black Panther. Fucking awesome, man. Yeah. No, I, I – this is one of those movies that, like, I did go in expecting a lot. Yeah, because it was so hyped up, and you know all the reviews were positive. the The trailer was amazing. Seeing him in, you know, in uh, what was that Civil War was just that's like yeah, fuck yeah. So it was one of those things where I went in expecting the world, and what I personally got was like the entire solar neighborhood. So mm-hmm. I go in expecting Earth, and I get the other seven planets and Pluto and the Sun all jammed into my face. It's like this – it was amazing for me. The visuals were incredible. The plot points were good. I mean the villain was great. Dude, oh, yeah. Killmonger, Killmonger was awesome in this movie. If I had if I had one complaint, it would be that it's, it's not slow in the beginning – but it takes a little bit of time before it kicks off with Killmonger. Yeah. Um, the thing is, it was still exceedingly entertaining that whole oh, time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, um, there was a lot of build up to Killmonger, yeah. and it, it makes sense. It's a bit of drag. It, but. It, it, well, it does kind of make sense, though, in, in the grand scheme of things, because the way the initial movie sets up, it's like, this is just a dude he's in with Claw, and Claw is being. Well, he has a whole plan that yeah. he's going to do. The thing is, it's. I mean, it's like it's they had they had a lot of other kids set up to do. Yeah. Apparently, from what I've heard, this movie originally was like three, four hours long, so they had to cut down quite a lot, right, to get to this point. And I can see that in the way the movie progressed. Yeah. Because yeah. like like I said, there was a lot of setup there. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of forward stuff, and then when Killmonger comes in, it starts moving so fast and so awesome that you're just like, oh my god. It's it's like a it's like a super bell curve, yeah. It, it, it it's it's kind of a long slow slope up, and then it just shoots. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. straight, you know, the vertical, and it's great. Like, I mean, 
I don't know. We got to go into depth on this movie a little bit because yeah. all I'm going to do is sit here and devolve into a pile of I really like this movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it, it's spoilers here because oh, absolutely. That's why we we're going to talk deep talk on this. Yeah, that's why we say you need to go yeah. see it before you listen. So, granted, this isn't a movie where there are like a lot of twists or anything like that. No, it's, no, no. It is. Uh, I've I've seen people talking about like, oh my god, this this solves so many problems with Marvel's movies in the past. It still boils down to hero fights opposite of hero. Like it's not it's not like they reinvented the wheel here. No, but no, not at all. What they did was craft something that even using those tropes and the things they've done in Marvel movies before, they did it exceedingly well in this movie, and they did it, and they made it uh, feel new again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they definitely took a lot of uh, just a lot of uh, what's what's the word I'm looking for cliches, and they used them. They used them in a way you wouldn't necessarily expect them to um you know you you got all sorts of great characters you got shuri who's a sister she's like the tech genius yeah Yeah. i mean apparently that's different from in the comics um i guess in the comics she's less the genius he's more the genius and she's more of a, a sort of badass on the side type thing um but I mean, they still they still use her to great effect. She's still in this movie. And she she matters, and that, oh yeah, that's amazing. It's it's a big part of that setup. Is you set up <clears throat> um, what's the name of his ex girlfriend? Um, oh shit, I just had that pulled up, and I can't. <laughs> Go ahead, remember. I forgot to pull it up. But um, and apologies if we get any of the names wrong. Um, we're retards. We we are yeah. To I mean, straight up, we're fucking retards. Middle aged white dudes in <laughs> in Cincinnati, Ohio. So. Nakia. We're gonna be. It's, it's we Nakia. Might up some names um, here. And she, you know, she's she's his yeah, ex. Every and, and this like the spy. She yeah. plays a huge part in the movie. They set up the way they set up uh, T'Challa, his ex, his sister, and um, the general of yes. his guard. Uh, and I can't remember the name of those guards, and I don't even know if it's said in the movie. But a lot of people were talking about, "Oh my God, it's such and such guards." Yeah. Um. They all got set up better than pro- like than like most even like pepper pots did in iron man like better than most other marvel movies secondary characters oh shit i completely forgot that pepper pots was a thing <laughs> <laughs> pardon me yeah. um got to clear my throat there i completely forgot that pepper pots was even a thing yeah. until you just mentioned her like she exactly. was played by Gwyneth Paltrow. She's forgettable. She's, forgettable. Yeah, she's, told, she's a throwaway. Yeah, she's like, completely. Like, I like she's not even in, She's not even in a third movie. No, uh, she's mentioned she was, for like five minutes, and then I think she, she pops up at the end. I think something was like she didn't want to come back for the movies, and then oh wow, they're making a lot of money. Yeah, I'll come back for Sp- the last two seconds of Spider Man. But yeah, it, it's it's um, Luke, why are you playing with the candle axe? <laughs> Reasons. Um, but uh, no, it's it's in. They're awesome characters. Yeah, they're set up well, and they all get badass moments and stuff. Oh yeah, no, like this is this is one of those movies where there's there's it's plot, 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 awesome action scene, plot, plot, and then just from that point, from the moment that Killmonger becomes the main show, it's just badass moment after badass moment. Yeah, um, <clears throat> you got Shuri and Nakia fighting off Killmonger. You've got the leader of the guards, that general who, who is like the greatest warrior they have, just fighting everything. You got the big war at the end between uh, Mbaku and his tribe, and Mbaku. Um, oh, what's his name? I can't even remember his uh, the other guy's name. Um, Wakabi, who yeah. has his tribe, and they're just. It's like it's it's uh, such a great fucking movie. There's so many great action sequences. Like there's some good drama in the movie too. Like great like drama. legit legit drama. Um like if you want to continue talking characters, uh I fuck it uh, we don't have to even bury the lead Killmonger. Yeah. Is a character I haven't felt for a villain this much and I don't know I don't think I've ever felt for a villain this much, especially in Marvel. Yeah, no. Um for I'm, any reason. He's like he, he does a bunch of evil shit, and they point. They they have to try and point out how evil he is because he's fucking right. Yeah, no, like every he's not wrong. He's every, going about it the wrong way, but 
Uh, I mean, I don't agree with his methods, but I 100% agree with every argument he made about, you know, Wakanda not helping their people, not helping, you know, their brothers and sisters in, in Africa and in other parts of the world just living in shit conditions. Like, I completely, I, can, I see that because, you know, I grew up in the ghetto, so I know that shit's bad in the ghetto, as they want to put it. So it's like, every argument he made about that, like, yeah, no, dude, I see exactly where you're coming from, and I don't, I don't, I don't hate you for it. Like, I definitely never. No. I mean, it's, like you said, he he's one of the only villains. I think he's the only villain in any MCU movie thus far that I've I've sympathized with. You know, like because I I see where he's coming from. I see exactly where he's coming from. Yeah. Because, I mean, that's where, I mean, yeah, I wasn't in, like, Compton, but I did grow up in a ghetto. I did grow up in a shit part of, of the city where it was all poor black folk. It sucks. It's terrible. But there's a sense of community there, too. And it's all about that systemic just being put down mm -hmm. and not able to get out of that. And he did through pretty much just absolute rage and, like, his, his path of becoming, a, like, a soldier and then, like, Delta and then some kind of like super CIA undercover, like yeah, go yeah. in and destabilize an entire country. Fuck you. I uh, like operative, like everything they talk about this dude is he pre he like went through his whole life with absolute rage and just not giving a fuck. And he, he fucking made it man. And you know, um, I believe I, I, I saw a tweet about how he learned the white man's game and use it against everybody. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah, no, that's, that's pretty fucking accurate. Like he, he totally, he totally did. And it was to great effect for this movie. Like what did he call in the, it called, did he call her a colonist or a, uh, uh, what did they call uh white people, specifically British people? I noticed. I, I don't remember. Um, um they called him it a few times. I'm like, I wish I could remember. There's a scene or when he's first introduced. He's in a museum talking to in a like the British National History Museum. He's talking to a curator, and he's talking about them coming and taking artifacts from Africa, yeah, and specifically one that is um, vibranium from uh, Wakanda that was found in a different country. And he calls her. I think he calls her. The colonist or something like that right like oh it was it was fucking funny her face just the look of her face like what <laughs> like what are you talking about i don't no no it was brilliant yeah no i i i i loved every moment of this look yeah I martin gotta, freeman was awesome too like i like how he was just there like he really was <laughs> like even when they tell him to shut the fuck up <laughs> with, with uh, yeah. baku's uh, tribe oh man. he's just there like, he's not important until he becomes important, but he's just there. It's just him, and he's just got long. He's just along for the ride. And uh, Colonizer. That's what they call yeah, him. Yeah, colonizer. Uh, that makes sense. You no, know, because mm -hmm. that's exactly what the British Empire so, was. Oh, my God, yes. Like, oh I can't remember. They talked. They, they, <laughs> there's a scene where they talk down about Americans in, like, uh, like their uh, tourists and stuff, and that was funny. But when they mentioned Colonizer, ugh. That was fucking great. But yeah, no, I, I love how he's just there. Oh yeah. He like he he he's simultaneously a background character and a main character, but like because of course he's just gonna be relegated to side character when he's not needed. Yeah. Because yeah. I mean this is just a, a dude. Yeah, he's a, he well he's a CIA agent, yeah. but it doesn't matter because this isn't about him, it's not about you know no. that. Um, so it was <clears throat> it, it was pretty much the link between Civil War to this movie too. That's I think they, that's kind of how they used it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I see it as they wanted. I guess they wanted to have something there to blink it. So especially when they ultimately decide to become more a part of the world, right? Um, they have someone who's able to help them, a CIA agent, and uh, obviously they've helped him. He's not going to keep quiet about what Wakanda really is because Wakanda has been hidden. And the rest of the world thinks it's a third world country that yeah, no, they, has they, textiles. They think it's farmland. Yeah. I mean, and that shows at the end of the movie when they're having that little press conference that they're doing. It's like, forgive us, you know, for dis any disrespect, but what can a bunch of farmers teach the rest of the world about things? And T'Challa just stops 
and he has that smile on his yeah, face, so like, good. let me show you, like, let me show you, motherfuckers. It's not smug. It, it's it's uh, it's more. It was like, smug as fuck. Well. No, no, I didn't get the smug. It, it was more like, don't worry, I got you. Yeah, yeah. It's it's the surprise. It was, it was definitely more friendly than smug. I, mm. I don't know how really to describe it. Like smug to me is that arrogant. He was less arrogant and more charming. He was more graceful. Mm-hmm. And that was one thing that I thought Chadwick Boseman did really well. He oh, was, yeah. I He's mean, amazing. He, he he is royalty. Like, the way the dude acted, the way the dude did everything, what he brought to this role was 100% royalty. Chadwick Boseman, and I've said it, like, when we talked about the trailers, he's probably the slickest motherfucker on the planet, at least in this role. I don't know if he is in real life. But in this role, he plays T'Challa slick as fuck. Yeah. He's so badass, <laughs> yeah, calm, no. collected all the time. It was great. It, he's he's just fucking great. For some, you know, I would I would laugh if he's like way more awkward in real life, like we are. Yeah, that'd be funny. Like we're just <laughs> Kinda... we're just we're just piles of social anxieties. So it's like. <laughs> It would it would amuse me to no end and make me feel a little bit better if this smooth month, this smooth dude is just oh I'm awkward as fuck in real life, mm-hmm. um, and acting lets me be a little bit less awkward, and I would be like oh that's really cool because honestly I feel less awkward when we're doing this kind of thing than when I'm just sitting out there you know you know jerking my dick off on the patio or something. It's like well, you uh, probably should feel pretty awkward. Uh, just being out there jerking your dick off on the patio. But, yeah, it's like, oh, that's really cool. And, um, <clears throat> uh, but, you know, back to the whole, you know, being awkward thing. Yeah. The very opening scene of the movie, he's sitting there and they're doing a rescue mission. So you got them flying in, he jumps off, and they're going to rescue um, Nakia because, you know, the news is that uh, his father and uh, T'Chaka died at the UN press conference and she doesn't know yet. Yeah. So that's what he's on his way to do. They've tracked her down. And it's funny because the general looks at him and says, don't freeze. I never freeze. And then he goes down and he fucking freezes when he sees her. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, he froze again, didn't he? He sure did. I love the banter. Oh, man. The way they're teasing him. like It's it's fu- it's good, man. It's like. The relationship between him and his sister, there's only a few scenes, but it's great. Oh, yeah. no. Minus one joke that they threw in that. Was fucking. It, I laughed, but it was cringy as fuck when they do the "What are those?" joke. Yeah, that. <laughs> I was like, "Why?" I was like, "Okay, why are we putting memes in our movies from two thousand like what fifteen, two thousand fourteen, like something like, like that?" Like, come on, dude. It, that's not been a thing for a while. <laughs> Don't. And you know we're middle aged white men, and we know that's not been a thing for a while. So yeah. I mean, come on, guys. That's why it was cringy. But yeah, you know, because she's so innocent and so fucking like. Yeah, no, I could totally see her doing that. that yeah, was... no, that was fine. I mean, I I accepted <laughs> it's that forgivable. it was. I accepted that it was a thing. I was like, okay, whatever. It's it's there. It's in the movie. Yeah. We're just gonna have to deal with it because it doesn't really take away from the from the experience anyway. I loved that they almost, and I I wasn't I didn't think about it before. I'm thinking about it now. That scene <clears throat> she's showing him that is so James Bond and Q. About everything, except obviously she's a lot more entertaining than a lot younger, having fun more than like Q would in James Bond. Yeah, I know but, some old. She's way more entertaining than an old white British dude. Yeah, but, absolutely. But I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love Q, but this that whole scene, Black Panther is essentially like James Bond. Like everything she, they're talking about, he's in the lab looking at like the, the fucking new inventions and new tech and stuff. Right. It's so fucking James Bond. And yeah, no, great. I mean, it, it totally – like, this is the closest we've gotten thus far to a black James Bond. Yeah. Which, by the way, I want Idris Elba to play the next James Bond. Oh, yeah. That would be that would be incredible. He'd be awesome. Make that happen, guys. Seriously. I, I actually like a uh, old – I know that they want to go with a younger James Bond for more movies, not to get completely sidetracked, <laughs> but, uh, an, uh, like, Idris Elba is fucking perfect for it. He, a little bit older. He's – I mean, Idris is almost one of those guys that um, I will watch anything that he's in. Yeah. So I mean, like if if I see his name on it, even if it's even if it's like a really bad movie, if his name is on it, I'll watch it. Mm-hmm. I'd be honest with you, I I just love that man. <clears throat> but anyway, yeah. back to the movie. Similarly, Forrest Whitaker in this, I was really looking forward to seeing what he had a bigger role than I thought. Yeah, yeah. I thought no. he was just going to be like one dude, like a spiritual dude, and then out. But no, he's got backstory that's important, and then he's like, 
I mean, hey, Forrest Whitaker's awesome, period. Yeah, no, he's the, actually, he's the reason um, I recently purchased The Last King of Scotland, because yeah. he's in it, and I've heard it's a good movie, and I want to watch it anyway. So, I mean, mm-hmm. you know, you, you tell me one of my favorite actors of all time is in a movie, I'm like, I am checking that movie out. And it's one of those things that's been on my watch list for a while, so now I own it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, no, he was the, he's the spiritual leader in this, but it turns out that uh, Njobu, who is... Um, T'Chaka's, T'Chaka's uh, brother, who T'Chaka, of course, was T'Challa's father, who was the king of Wakanda until he died. Um, he was a spy in the U.S., you know, taking keeping an eye on things there. And it turns out that he had stolen, he had helped Klaus or Claw steal some vibranium, which of course is not okay. That's not cool. So um, he was gonna, he was gonna fight. He was gonna, you know. I think their plan was to whatever position he was in in, you know, the United States, he was going to do some really bad things. They had a plan where they were going to kill people. It he was out- he was essentially going to do Killmonger's plan on a smaller scale. Yeah, uh, they were they had weapons. They were arming up, um, uh, <clears throat> and he turns out that his best friend, who's Forrest Wigger's character, Zuri. Uh, yeah. He uh, is also from Wakanda and has been keeping an eye on this dude the whole time. Right. Because I guess his his bro, T'Challa's uncle was kicked out of Wakanda. They made it. No, he didn't no, leave no, 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 no. He was a spy. He was a spy for for Wakanda. Like he was a he was a a, a war dog, as they called him. I don't think he was. No, the war no. Dog. He, he was he was a spy though. He wasn't kicked out. It wasn't until they discovered that he had helped Klaus steal vibranium and held, had people die that anything was a problem. That's why T'Chaka went to him to begin with. Oh, okay. I yeah. don't know. I, I, it, the whole thing about him not being allowed to go back made I, – I don't no, think was No, he, he was, he was 100% on allowed. He was 100% allowed to go back. In fact, T'Chaka came to him to take him back to answer for the crimes of the deaths of his brothers and sisters in Wakanda from Klaw. When from Claw, Claw found out how to get yeah, – Yeah, and helping Claw steal the vibranium and, of course, having the vibranium to begin with, which, yeah. is, which was just not okay at the time. And – the the shitty part though, and this is where really the the biggest part of the movie comes from, is when you discover that he had a son, mm-hmm. which uh, T'Chaka chose to leave behind after he was forced to kill Injobu for basically attacking Missouri and attacking whoever. It's like no, you can't do that. You have crimes to answer for, and he was forced to act, and he ended up killing him. Yeah, which was really shitty. And instead of taking the son back with him, he left him. Yeah, he, he decided let, he, he had to preserve. He left the, his nephew uh, in favor, you know, in this shitty person without a parent, without a father, in favor of, uh, you know, I I don't know what he was. I mean, I guess in favor of Wakanda and whatever. It, it's supposedly to preserve the <clears throat> secrecy of Wakanda. Right. Is what he said. His reasoning was. He he left the kid and he made a mistake by doing it. He also had no idea that his father, or the that his brother had marked the kid as Wakandan. It, right. You know, told him everything. He, he gave him the, uh, the tattoo. Yeah, yeah. Which, I, which, man, I fucking I wish, like, I, I want to see the story where he actually grows up with T'Challa <laughs> because that story would be so awesome if Killmonger wasn't a villain. Yeah, I, I would love to see, like, where he would have ended up being if that hadn't happened that way. Yeah. You know, like, like what if he had been taken back to Wakanda? And honestly, uh, any time that, that, you know, T'Challa meets with his father on an astral plane, I gotta be honest with you, I was crying. Oh yeah, it, like the whole the whole th- after you find out what Killmonger's been through and what his uh, yeah yeah his reason for it they killed you know they killed his father and left him there alone he had to fight for the rest of his life that's like that was fucking that's that's deep that's hard and and when and when T'Challa confronts T'Chaka about it yeah in that scene where he's like no I refuse to die I refuse to join you I is not my time yet like I was I was dude I was legit crying like there oh, were yeah. tears coming down my face and he straight like, up tells him you were <clears throat> wrong all of you were wrong about Wakanda we should have helped y'all we should have done something y'all are fucked up for all the other people y'all need that, Jesus yeah 
is basically what he was saying. Yeah, like yeah. well, he said we should have helped the entire world. We could have made the world a better place. And yeah, we didn't. And we need to do. We need to do better. Probably, maybe could have. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, we, the human race kind of loves war. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> it's it's war and sex. That's all we like. <laughs> that's yeah. all we care about. Yeah, yeah, we we use sex to sell. We use war to sell. So I mean, that's what it is. <laughs> But yeah, no, I, I that in fact that ends up when I look and think about the entirety of the movie, like I've loved, I loved every second of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but that scene stands out to me as like my favorite scene in the whole movie mm-hmm. because it's like, you know, he he has a moment of growth, a moment of realization. Like you're not the perfect person I thought you were. You're not the king I want to be like. Oh yeah, that was ah uh. yeah, like like you're not who I thought you were. You ended up being worse than I thought you could ever be. It's it's, it's a, really it's like, it's sad like, to have to come to terms with a betrayal your like father. that. Yeah. yeah, they didn't. They weren't everything. And I mean, they, hopefully, a lot of people don't even have to ever have that. Or it's they don't have a father that they put up that high in high regard, so that it never comes crashing down for them. Because that's a that's a fucking like. I mean, a lot of people will go through it in their lives. Yeah, that's a huge. Um, just, I don't know, like a, a changing moment in a person's life. Yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's definitely Your heroes just, fall. Basically. Yeah, like, that, that hurt. Yeah. And not that I can necessarily relate to that, but, like, that was, that was a powerful moment for me. And that was, yeah, oh yeah. I, I, like I said, I legit, I, I had tears coming down my face, like, literally, like, at least 10, 12 tears, like, during that scene. Like, yeah. I was holding back, like, I can't be crying right now. Yeah, oh yeah. And, uh, I mean... Dude, that that is my favorite scene throughout the entire movie. When he sits there, he confronts his father. He realizes that you were wrong. You all were wrong. Every single one of you. And this is where this is where the change happens. This is where things get better. This is where I draw the line. None of you matter anymore. It's gonna be me. It's so sad. I'm gonna make this, this work. This is where shit changes. And then Thanos shows up like a week later. <laughs> oh jeez, just yeah. destroys everybody. Yeah, Thanos is just going to come along and fuck uh, everything up. But for now, too, things too are great. It'll be great right now. Right. But yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I, honestly, when he comes back and the whole the whole final fight and his conflict with Killmonger um, is it just it, – it's so fucking awesome. Yeah, no, And then I, mean, I really – I once again, Marvel – Stop killing your villains, please, please, please. They kill like he he offs Claw unceremoniously. Yeah, no, no. Killmonger just shoots Claw. Like that's that's all that happens. He just like, like boom. Like I know Claw's not. He's a secondary villain at best, sure. But I he's enjoyable as fuck, especially yeah. in this movie. Yeah, fucking um, Andy Circus. Andy Circus. Yeah, yeah, is absolutely amazing as an actor. Whether he's playing a monkey or if he's actually in a movie or if he's playing golem whatever andy circus is fucking awesome and in this movie he's so batshit crazy everything he does is it's it's great to watch even the beginning of the movie where the security guard they rob the fucking museum and the security guard drops his gun and puts his hands up and andy circus walks up and is like hey 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 don't worry i'm not gonna hurt you just go run away you and the dude can, yeah, turns you can and runs, go. and he shoots him right in the fucking back. It's like I wasn't gonna let him go, or somebody <laughs> says some shit like that, and it's like, God damn, what a mess. He's like, God. I guess he's kind of channeling a little bit of the Joker, like a Heath Ledger Joker, but um, not to that same manic state. Yeah, somebody who's legit enjoying what they're doing, but he's he's very maybe that's why they decided to kill him off. Yeah, maybe he's kind of similar to that. But he's got an end goal. He wants money. I mean, I can see the comparison between him and Heath Ledger's Joker. Yeah. But there's also a fuckload of, st- of difference still. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. I, I honestly, in that one regard, there, Joker didn't really have much of an end goal. His, his only end goal was to show Batman how shitty the world was. Yeah, his his main goal was chaos. But, but Killmonger, that's like a secondary goal. Well, no, we're talking about Claw. Claw, I'm sorry, Claw. Claw, Claw is the one Claw's you made the comparison second, with. Yeah. It's like, I, I Claw just wants money. Mm-hmm. Joker, and chaos on the side. Joker Joker fun. wants nothing but chaos. He doesn't even want money, which is evidenced by the fact that he burned that stack of, uh, stack of cash. 
Like, and I don't know how much money was there, but even if that was just one dollar bills, you're looking at at least a hundred million dollars. That was that was a lot of fucking money. That was a fuckload. That was a literal mountain of money. Like literally, and then he left that poor Italian guy on it. <laughs> well, like, uh, wasn't he a Russian? Was he? Ru- I don't. I, I'm I pretty sure. Remember yeah. which? It was yeah, the that, Italian or the Russian gangster. I'm pretty sure that was the Russian because the gangster gets dropped off the roof and has his legs broken by Batman. Yeah. <laughs> So that's what happens to him. Oh man! No, I remember that movie me? very this well. Won't kill you. I remember. No, he, he's holding him. He's like he actually looks at him. And you're gonna have to try again. This fall won't kill me. I'm not trying to kill you. Yeah. And then he drops him. He's like, oh god. Oh, that was great. I remember that movie very well. That's one of those movies I've seen every time I have a chance to sit down and watch it. I I will. Yeah. I love I love the Dark Knight. It's a great movie. That's, this movie's very. It's up there with the Dark Knight as far as comic book movies go for me. Personally, this um, is one yeah, of my favorite yeah. Marvel movies. Easy. Um, I think this was a better character introduction than anyone except maybe uh, the first Iron Man with Tony Stark. I, I think the only movie I can say in Marvel U that I like better than this one is Thor 3. Thor Ragnarok just had great humor, though. Yeah. I, that's the only reason why I can say I like that one. But if we're talking, um, like, just because I love to laugh, like, that's my thing. Mm-hmm. But if we're talking, like, just overall presentation, this is probably the best Marvel movie so far. Um, I mean, it's so much better than Ultron. It's so much better than the original Avengers. Although the, the original Avengers is, is right up there with it. I, I got to say, though, like, this movie is really, really fantastic. It is. Like, the car chase scene in the middle oh, of fucking – what, what, what were they? So Tokyo cool. or Korea? Uh, no, they were in um, Pretty sure. Seoul? Or yes. No, they, they were Honestly, Taiwan, maybe. I don't, I don't know. I, I got to say the writing looked less kana and more whatever Koreans used. Like, there were more there were more rounded, rounded things. That, I don't know, but it Either was way, great. It was awesome. And when she fucking pulls that spear out – Yes. And chucks it in front of the car. Oh, that was no, so funny. She cool. chucked it through the car. Yeah. And had it hit the ground and that car just shit. God, vibranium's awesome. That, that and she was just she was just a badass, man. She climbs up on that car and just stands there like And then she's fucking laughing. <laughs> she took that car out. <laughs> yeah, she she fucking totally giggles. Like it's amazing. I love that. And the, like the fight the the uh the fight scene in the uh in in the casino into the mm-hmm. illegal casino they go into. That was that was so good. I, that but, was cool. but him him in the Black Panther suit like disassembling cars and just destroying shit and you, you see the the moment in the trailer where he like he the car gets destroyed and he's fucking running up the side of the building like that happened and that was bad that was as badass in the movie as it looked in the trailer but even better because it was we got more of it yeah oh yeah and like he takes the fucking wheel off with his claw honestly watching this movie and the shit Black Panther can do. It's like you sit there and you go, "All right, so why do we like? Why do we need Tony, why do we need Iron Man? Why do we need Iron Man? Why do we need uh, Captain America? Like, yeah, like, with one of them, I mean, it's been replaced here. Oh, absolutely, yeah, no. <laughs> this dude can one do of them has to go basically away. Basically, what they can, either one of those guys can do, like, or both Tony of them can, can do. Tony can fly though, so you keep Iron Man, I guess. Okay, Tony can fly and he has missiles. Yeah. So I mean, okay, let's have, let's let him have that. <laughs> so Black Panther can totally replace Captain America. We don't need you, Cap. I'm sorry. Yeah. You're not relevant anymore. <laughs> Although you might be more relevant since Nazis are coming back, so we might need you to come back and punch some Nazis. But otherwise. Go yeah. away. You can go away. <laughs> I mean, you're fighting Thanos. But Yeah, I mean I'm you, need, pretty, you pretty much need everybody at that point. You gotta you're gonna call Cat back. Get this man a shield. Yeah, but Still I don't love that line in the trailer. Yeah, no, that that's a good he's just sitting there, he's casual as fuck about it, and someone get this man he points over to the side and Cap just steps out of the darkness. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's gonna be good. Yeah, I can't I oh man, I can't wait for can't wait to see uh, Black Panther come back in Infinity War. Can't wait to see. Just I want more interactions between all those characters. I I really, I really want. I, like there's that's the thing with Marvel is that they've set up so many awesome characters and yeah, even including yeah. side characters. I really 
I want to see a moment where Tony Stark goes to the lab in Wakanda and just sits there and talks with um, his sister. Shuri. With Shuri. Yeah. Holy shit, that would be amazing. Yeah. Those two, you would have to drag, you would have to drag them both out of the lab or at least drag Tony and be like, no, we, we gotta go fight the thing, Tony. Put on the suit. Come on. Yeah, yeah. But, 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 <laughs> like, it's, it's so awesome. But that thing does a thing, and I yeah. want to mess with it. Surrey, Tony Stark, Rocket Raccoon, and uh, fucking Bruce Banner. All in the same room talking about techie shit. I got to say, man, the guy that played Wakabi, like, I could have swore, like, where have I seen him before? And I, I, I was thinking that, too. What like, else was he in? He was in Get Out. He was the main. He oh, was, he was Chris. He was the Chris in Get and Out. Okay, I was like, yeah. I, I, it, took so, it took a moment for me to actually realize it, because at first I'm like, is that Chris? It's like, no, this guy's too big to be Chris because he's he's bulkier in this yeah. movie because he's a fucking warrior. Like this can't be Chris. And then you know I just confirmed it on IMDb. Like yeah, that's Chris. Like holy shit, that's why I know him. That's why I recognize him because I loved Get Out. Yeah, Get Out was such a great fucking flick. But yeah, he he was he yeah he's Chris and Get Out. And I didn't even re- I I thought I I thought it was, but you know. I didn't want to be like, oh yeah, all black people look the same. That's Chris. <laughs> that would have been bad. If you were that, that's not, I mean, that, that unfortunately, when I was sitting there, like, where have I seen him before? Oh, that's Chris. Wait, is I was that really thinking, Chris? I knew that smile. Yeah, yeah. Smile that doesn't reach the eyes is what I kept thinking. Yeah, is he any the the character he's playing? He's fucking. He's pissed off that they still haven't gotten. Uh, Claw. Claw, because Claw killed his parents when yeah. he stole the vibranium. Yeah, thirty year, the thirty years prior or whatever when when. Yep. And uh, and Jobu helped him steal the vibranium, helped him get in there, and all the people died in the explosion he set off to distract him to get away. Yeah, that his, his parents died in that. I was really thinking um, towards the end when he turns, I thought something would happen that would stop him would be T'Challa telling him, you realize that uh, Killmonger's father, the one who started all this, he's the reason your parents are dead, not right. just Claw. Right. And then that didn't happen. His wife telling him to shut well, the, sit the fuck down. Were, were they husband and wife, or were they? Oh, just, okay, they might have just been lovers. Like, yeah, I mean, she called him lover multiple times. Yeah, there I was, assume. but there was no mention of husband yeah. wife. So that's they have a relationship. Though. Yeah, th- there's something there that's more than just you know whatever. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, dude, that scene was there amazing. A couple. That that scene was. I loved that scene because you know, uh, you got you got. Um, Mbaku, he's he's down and he's getting charged by the rhino and she just steps in front of him because yeah, <clears throat> and the rhino just stops right at her and just licks her. Yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah, I know her. I'm not gonna hurt her. And, and you know she draws her spear against him. It's like he's like, would you ch- truly kill me? He's like, for Wakanda, yes, mm-hmm. yes, I would. And that's when that's when he's like, all right, it's time to not be an asshole anymore. Yeah, <laughs> I've been a fucking idiot this whole time. Because you know, yeah, they you know at, at this point in the movie, uh, you know, Killmonger came back and um, well, Killmonger won. Well, no, T'Challa no, that, that's, that's where I'm getting to this point. Oh, okay. Because uh, well, yeah, you know, we, we just Hopefully completely seen the movie if they're here. We just completely blew past that because you got Killmonger. Uh, you know, he has a blood right to the throne because he is the son of a prince of of the thing, and so he comes back. He challenges. He doesn't technically win. But as far as everyone's concerned, he won. I mean, no, no, no he won. Like, like no, they, well, no, he didn't. They cause... pull some bullshit to have him come back, and it's <clears throat> it's pretty clear that they are at that point willing to bend the rules in Wakanda, right? Because, like, I, I guess he, 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 they make the argument of, well, he didn't die and he didn't surrender. The motherfucker threw him off a cliff. He's no, been, no, he, he's he been granted. No, 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 he didn't throw him off a cliff. He threw him off a waterfall. Okay, he threw him off like, a cliff like waterfall. Yeah, no, there, there, there <laughs> he, 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 where he landed, he should not have survived. <laughs> T'Challa should have died and would have died had they not brought him the flower that grants yeah. the power of. If uh, uh, Mbaku Panther. hadn't found him and put him in the snow to preserve his body, mm, yeah, but we don't have to tell the whole movie. Yeah, like, but uh. I mean, like, it, it was pretty clear that they were really not wanting him to be king. It was like, uh, tradition, uh, we maybe bend tradition at this point. Yeah. <laughs> Stella comes back, yeah, we'll just fucking wipe this under the rug. Because I thought, I kind of thought they were going to make a point of, like, no, he's been crowned, it's tradition, blah, blah, blah. And, no, it was, they were all like, no, nah, kill this motherfucker, please. <laughs> Chala, come back. Kill, kill, kill Monger, he needs to die, he's yeah. a dickhole. Like, All except completely. for, uh... Uh, no, pretty. It was pretty much universal that, that all except for Wakabi. 
So, yeah, yeah, for he's a while. He's the only one. Yeah, well, for... he's straight up started a fucking civil war, basically. Yeah. Um, when when T'Challa comes back and he's up there, he takes a ship down. Uh, they look at him, what should we do? Attack him. Yeah, and... I, oh, that, that look on T'Challa's face where he's pleading with him. Like, don't do that. I... Honestly, that was one moment in the movie that I was kind of like, mm, I don't see this happening this way. Like, I get it. He brought you Killmonger, but are you really going to risk your entire, uh, like, your entire country Yeah. on this dude who showed up out of nowhere and betray someone who you've grown up with who, yeah, it's not like he fucking assisted Killmonger, which this dude's father did. He didn't know that, granted. But I, I like when he betrays him and everything, and they have that fucking fight. I was sitting there thinking, like, uh, I don't know. I don't really see this. Yeah, it, it, it is kind of strange. It was, I mean, it was, it the seemed only like thing, it was done for the plot. The only thing that was really there that you would think would turn him for any reason is just because he failed to bring back Killmonger when he gave us word that he yeah. would. Which, I mean, given the circumstances, he did try his best. He just didn't succeed. Yeah, and it's not like, like I said, it's not like he fucking let Killmonger get away intentionally or anything like that. Yeah, no, there was no so, intention. It was just circumstances and well-executed plans that ended up, you know, being better executed than their plan was. And that, that's basically all that happened. Yeah, on top of everyone else being against Killmonger. It was like, mm, Yeah. I I guess you could make it, you make make. You could make the argument that it wasn't necessarily it wasn't specifically Killmonger. He might have legitimately believed in the plan to arm people and I mean, make Wakanda. I mean, the dude. I was, guess that's they actually he did make that argument. Is, yeah, no, the dude he was said definitely a warrior. Wakanda has to yeah yeah take, I mean, start taking over. The dude was definitely a warrior. He was definitely in favor of Wakanda being more of a conqueror or a liberator than than yeah. the peaceful, you know, secret country they have been for so long. He, save for the whole like infiltrate, take out heads of government. Um, Wakanda's whole plan was bad. Yeah, in complete honesty, N- like judging by today's like technology, no, Wakanda wins. Judging by the fact that you've got helicarriers, you've got um, the uh, what's the Avengers fucking the thing that Hulk takes to yeah fucking Scar. That uh, that thing is capable of fucking leaving the atmosphere? Are you sh- fucking shitting me? Yeah. I didn't know those, uh, the uh, twin jet. I didn't know those things were that that capable. Right. Like, uh, technologically speaking, Wakanda's not that much more advanced than the rest of the world by this point. I mean, truth be told, they're not much more advanced than we are. Well, I mean, beyond... I mean, they have shields and shit. Well, and... hold up. I'm getting to that point, though. Like, beyond some of the portable batter power source type stuff they're able to do and granted some of the turning energy into solid object type block you know force field type stuff they're not really that much more advanced than we are we can we can do a lot of the things they did just on more of an experimental scale yeah i don't think we're anywhere close to what they are they're they they were definitely super tech in this like we have like concepts but I mean, they had like the working mag train and stuff like that. We like, we have the working mag train. Not like that though. To turn off the. I mean, simply put, You're vibranium talking, beats anything we have now. Well, yeah, but vibranium also is. And the fact that they turned it into they. Oh, well, yeah, that's what I'm. The why I'm saying that Wakanda uh, and, itself and is. And that's way the point that I'm making have. is that we're not that far off with real world materials. Yeah, I don't. I, think I mean. We're, Granted, we have military, but military application, we're way far off of having that. Regular. I mean, granted, we don't have like the spaceships type stuff they have, like the kind of flying oh, the ships, VTOL stuff. But yeah. we totally have stuff like sound weapons and stuff like that. We can create barriers with things and all that. Our sonic stuff isn't it, it weaponized to hurt people. Like that's the only thing it can do. It's not like you can't take out a tank with uh, anything we have close to now. Granted, well, we have. Uh, um, fucking what's it called the I don't uh, know. uh Mac guns? Oh yeah, I mean we can totally microwave the tank. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean that's a thing. And eventually. <laughs> uh, well, we you know it, it's less about microwaving the tank and more about microwaving the people inside the tank. Yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying we is, can totally do. What I'm saying is their tech is it, it was really it's advanced as fuck. The whole yeah. handheld spear things that can destroy a fucking tank that was that was cool. 
The their soldiers though, just having shields and a sword was kind of weird. I mean, yeah, but I th- I think it's more uh, that in particular I completely understand because it's a, it's an ability to keep your heritage and keep your I think that's keep the, the classic was, stuff yeah. is while still bringing yourself into the modern age and yeah. that's basically what it was it was old design meets new technology yeah because I mean that's totally like they have that that the Chotel uh, sores that that what they had like that was totally you know. That, that was old style, but it was new tech yeah. because it was totally made out of vibranium and it was, sh- you know, electric and cool shit. And their shields that were weaved into the cloth, like that was cool. No, the shields that was fucking awesome yeah. when they pulled those up, pulled the, the the cloth over the. I mean, I don't know if you'd call that a robe or I can't remember the actual term for it. I mean, the clo- I don't um, know. I don't know their term for it. Like, there's well, it's a it's a real it article be, of clothing. It would be a cloak. Um, but or a the, scarf. that thing when they pulled that up and a fucking popped a shield, ah, oh, that was fucking awesome. I was yeah, I like, I want that. It's like it's like kind of reminds you of the Roman phalanxes and shit. Phalan- yeah, oh yeah, it was yeah. like a it was a phalanx. It was Spartan phalanx, Roman phalanx, anything like that. Like but I could imagine way more advanced. Yeah, and it was like fucking eight, nine, t- maybe higher above their heads and everything. Oh yeah, no, it, oh, it was great. It was at least a meter, meter and a half above their heads. Yeah. Like, like that was that was protecting you from almost everything. Yeah. And fucking the only thing it didn't, Back Panther jumping over it. <laughs> well, that and uh, M'Baku and his dude just coming up from behind and beating the shit out of him with sticks. <laughs> I was just going to say, M'Baku's guys, they're terrifyingly awesome. They are, M'Baku man. is a character. Him, He was so fucking cool for when he shows up to challenge T'Chanka, uh, T'Challa. T'Challa. And then when they go and meet him and he's sitting there like, like just... Oh, he was fucking cool. I, I love that character so much. He has one of the best moments in the movie is when he's sitting there. He, he tells Martin Freeman's character, Everett, shut up before we eat you. Oh, before I feed you to my children. Before I treat you. And then they just sit there and it gets super <laughs> serious and everything gets like it, the, the atmosphere completely changes. He just, he just laughs like, no, I'm kidding. We're vegan. <laughs> or yeah. We're vegetarian. We're vegetarian. I love it. <laughs> I think in the comics they are cannibalistic though. I, you know, was, I don't doubt it. It was so that's that whole fucking conversation was so good. I mean, that was the second time Martin Freeman had gotten shut the fuck down to. Oh yeah. When no. earlier he keeps talking and she says to uh, to Chala, if he touches you again, I'm going to impale him on that table. <laughs> He's like, wait, what? What did she say? <laughs> I I don't remember his response now. I, this is the movie I got. I got to go see this movie again. Yeah. This and is definitely a second th- watch movie. Maybe, maybe even a third watch. Because like the first time I see it, I'm I'm marveling at all the shit that's happening. There's so much cool things going on. Mm-hmm. There's so much. It's just there's great character interactions. The story is good. There's just it. I don't know what more to say. It's just a, it's such a great movie, but it's also really cool to look at. Yeah, like there's a lot there's lots of beautiful scenery and there's just there's lots of just cool shit to see you know like when they're walking among all the people and there's just people doing yeah, yeah. doing everyday things but way more technologically advanced than we would it was well it was and that's that just combination like you mentioned of old world in new tech yeah when they're walking through that market that could be any market in like south africa yeah except at the same time you see like people are pulling up fucking like holographic pdas and yeah, watches like and from shit. their watches yeah and like, it's like, oh it was awesome like i want one of those i was well, some of that tech in that movie yeah i want those beads i want one of those fucking like holographic displays right that was fun. Which the holographic cool. displays we can do. That's yes. something we no, no, can no, totally yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, it if, was if it you've was cool. got seventy grand, you can totally put one in your house. <laughs> yes. So I mean, it's no problem. We got that. We we'll we can there. do it. <laughs> I mean, the thing that that I got, I I definitely would want one of those those bead the the, the bead bracelets. Yeah. I mean, all the shit. I not not even because of the shit that it could do, just because of what it could do and the fact that. It never seemed to need it to be recharged. No. It, it never needed a battery. Like, that's what I want. I want my watch here to do, you know, some extra shit. You know, like, I it can turn off my lights and shit. But I want it to last for, like, months. I've got to imagine that vibranium, because of the properties of it and the way it, it's constantly in motion, 
they must be able to tap into that for energy. That must be how they use it for energy. I wouldn't doubt it at something on some like level. That. It's it's yeah, it's on some level it's some sort of nuclear type thing that's Well, because they mentioned that they it, it is an energy source as well. well. I mean, it's all radiation. Yeah. No matter how you cut, it's all radiation. Yeah. That's just energy in general. Um at least in most applications, mm-hmm. like lights are a form of radiation. So yeah, it's all radiation. It's just how do you how do you harness it? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so do you do you just do you attach something to it and take advantage of the motion? Do you split the atom, which is super dangerous? Yeah. Do you fuse the atom, which is also super dangerous? You know. I mean, they have nano machine nanites and stuff too. Yeah, which was insane. Like his suit. Being yeah. made from like nanites that like, live in the collar that he was wearing, you know the that little was cool. that that was that was so fucking. And that amazing. goes back to that like Iron Man shit. Like he's yeah. he's yeah. on that same level. He doesn't have all of the uh, some of the extra gadgets, but I love that they took it in a different way to make him as intimidating with the uh, uh, energy dis- uh, distribution. Or yeah, yeah, the kinetic distri- redistribution. Oh, that was so. Cool. Basically, what it is is you know it's Bishop's his- power from the X Men. By the way, I think. I don't know. Unless I'm uh, getting Maybe. the character wrong. But, uh, it, you know, as his suit takes hits, you know, mm-hmm. the nanites absorb it. And, and then, then he can after, fucking release it. At, yeah, at a certain point, you can release it as, as just an incredible wave of energy that knocks anything away. And it's like, <sighs> that, that is cool. fucking cool. And he uses that to effect in so many places. Like in the aforementioned war, he's sitting there getting pummeled on by oh, all yeah. these guys. They surround and him and just, start beating on him. He just fucking waits and then boop. He just hits it and poof, they all go flying. Or in the in the aforementioned car chase scene, he uses it to destroy one of the cars. Oh, that was so completely obliterates badass. the car. It was like yes, because he's sitting there taking bullets, and of course the suit is bulletproof, so it's just do do do. I love him. they remind his sister reminds him your suit's fully charged. You've been taking a lot of hits. Yeah, she's like yeah, you've been taking hits. You know your kinetic uh, thing is charged. It's like oh yeah. <laughs> And the the remote control of the car that she does. That's oh, so that was fucking, so fucking slick. That was amazing. Like, you know, you got these holograms that come up and form like a solid object and she just sits mm-hmm. in it and everything it she sees. Like, it was like um, the nanites <laughs> from Big Hero 6. Yeah. Uh, or like, I mean, almost uh, 3D printing in real time in like, I don't know. It was, it was weird, but it was awesome. Yeah. No, I, I don't know how to describe it. Like, I... I like I said, that's why I said holographic was the first thing that came to mind. It, yeah, it, physical it, hologram. Yeah, yeah, it was just a physical hologram where you could interact with it like directly, not having like a glove mm-hmm. on or anything. She sat in the thing, and it, it comes into play later when um, whenever it gets his one moment of yeah. badassery, and he's sitting there, and he's well, she she. I love Martin Freeman as an actor. I know I've said it before. I love Martin Freeman. He's yeah. awesome in Sherlock. He's awesome as uh, Bilbo Baggins. I mean, yeah, Bilbo. He he's the reluctant hero in he's everything the he does. Hero. But it's, he's it's great. also in this movie when he's cocky because he's a CIA agent. Yeah, I mean, he's cocky when he's telling Shaw, "No, we're taking him back. Claw's coming with us." Blah blah blah. Where like everything, everything he does and the way he is, and then at the end where he's like, "Well, I mean, I gotta help. <laughs> I'm right. here. Yeah, I, I'm here, right?" And she's like, "What can, can I can do? What can I do?" You can pilot the ship. Yeah. Like, what do you mean? Like, you used to be a great Air Force pilot. It's been adapted to U.S. Uh, cockpit. You go, go yeah. to town. Oh, that was it, she basically has to hype him up because he's like, I don't think I can do this. You were a great Air she's Force like, you pilot. You were an amazing pilot. <laughs> you can do it. You can do it. And he, sure enough, he's, he's fucking like, does I it. I can do it. Because <laughs> the whole goal is to stop the shipment of weapons from going out, and yeah. that that was his goal while they beat the, while they fought off Killmonger. Yeah. And while Shuri wasn't quite the badass in this movie, she is in the comics because that in the comics she apparently becomes black panther for a time yeah um she is she does have her moment of badassery when she's sitting there just she has these like little hand cannons and she's just blasting killmonger in the face like get the get the fuck out of here yeah and you know, it was just it was a fun movie and that was a great moment like i loved that moment like, yeah I, it, like they did so much with so many characters um it's great and yeah. it's I want, like I said before, I want to see these characters interact with the like other the rest of the Marvel universe and things. I, I in I different def- ways. Yeah, I definitely want to see Guardians come in and interact with them a little bit. I'm speaking of something I wanted to <clears throat> talk about. Um, I honestly really, really thought we would find out that the Soul Stone was in Wakanda, and I still think it is. I mean, honestly, I think it was hinted at in the opening sequence. Uh, is the Soul Stone purple? 
No, that's the, that's the one when they had. There was that there was, was a the, mo- that was the flower, and I think there's already been a purple stone. Yeah, that was in Guardians. That's why yeah. I there were, I know there was a hint at some point where there was a, a weird flash. Yeah, but I I it wasn't in the movie. It was in the opening you know comic sequence. So I don't know, but it wouldn't surprise me that you know there is a stone in Wakanda. I think I think ultimately it will be in like the center because they they haven't shown it yet. I think it's going to be in the center of. Vibranium. The vibranium, yeah, the the asteroid that that that's what hinted at it to me is the the asteroid coming, and essentially it's not just it, it can't just be the vibranium. Let me sit here and think. You got we we've seen the blue stone. That's the uh, the tesseract. The tesseract. We've uh, seen the yellow stone. The, uh, the tesseract is the uh, that's the one that the guardians had, right? No, they had the purple one. The Tesseract is the one from Thor. The little, 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 the little cube. Is it, is, it was a topic of the first Avengers oh, movie. Oh, that's the t- – okay, yeah. That one is uh, space. So you've got that. You've got the yeah. yellow, which is in the forehead of the Mind. Um, you've got the purple, which is what they had in Guardians. Yep, um, which is uh, – oh, fuck. I can't – now I can't remember. Um, space, time – Time is green. Uh, that's in Doc Strange. So he yeah. had that. That was the eye of what the fuck ever. Yeah, Agamato. Agamato, yeah. And <laughs> so, Agamato. what what's left? I mean, they're they've everything but the um, uh, the one we were just talking about. The Soul Stone. Soul Stone has been shown. I'm almost positive. Yeah. Um, what color you've is got the, Soul the red Stone? one? Oh, I don't. I think it's white. Hmm. Uh, you got the red one that Jane Foster had that he gave to. Did he give that one to the collector, or did they hang on to that one? You know, I'm not 100 percent sure. I know that was in the second Thor movie, right? You know, I I don't quite remember now, um, because I know I've seen it. I just I can't remember. That's Dark yeah. World, right? I can't remember much of Dark yeah, World. Dark World's mad. and it's at the very end. I think he gives it uh, to the collector, right? But either way, I think they've – I'm pretty sure they've shown all the stones except for Soul, mm. and they – you know, it, it hasn't really been hinted at very much. I thought that was what was going to link um, the Black Panther to um, it, the Panther it, God. Infinity War and all that, yeah. And, and Oh, no, uh, no, no. I mean specifically in this movie. Oh. Uh, I was like – me and Jake were talking. I thought that's what would allow him to commune with Bast and commune with the ancestors it may, of the Black you know, Panther. It could be – and this is just pure speculation on my part, based on something I learned today. Yeah. Apparently, in the comics, Bast is white, like a, is a white uh-huh. panther. So it's very possible that Bast himself or herself or whatever gender yeah. the god has, I don't know. I, I think in this movie, it's portrayed as a female, but I think in the comics, it's a male. I'm not really sure. Um, it could be that Bast itself is the Soul Stone. Yeah, and they might not even touch on. Sp- like specifically Bast, I thought they would show a literal Bast character. Yeah, but he meets his father and the ancestors. Yeah, the other mean, um, the other Black Panthers. It's, is all they it's, show. Yeah, it's shown in the story that's being told. Like a, yeah. you know, a, uh, like a sort of fuzzy image is shown, but nothing concrete or definitive. Yeah, which so uh, I think you're probably. I think uh, it's either in the vibranium mm-hmm. or it is. Uh, where the plant grew that allowed him to come in. Right. And that actually turns him into a super soldier, basically. Right. It gives him super strength speed. Right, 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 right. Uh, I think the, which the, the soul comic, stone's going to be there. Which in the comic, it's Bast that gives that blessing, not yes. the flower. Yeah, I don't know what connects the Black Panther to Bast. If it, it The flower might um, totally be there. I, I think it's Bast. Bast is the panther god. He's now, the one that. that bestows the blessing, and I think the flower may allow you to... Commune. Like, which yeah, commune. Just with like it. it does in the right. movie, then. Yeah. Except I think it's the flower that gives them the power. They they stay on the less spiritual side in yeah. this movie than they did and in... And way more, way, way more scientific and shaman type stuff. Yeah. A Le- little they, bit They less... mix it a little bit, yeah. but it's pretty clear that... I mean, it does something. He speaks to his father. He learns things yeah. by taking the flower. So I really do think the soul stone's got to be there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's the little hints they've given. Yeah. And in the trailer for Infinity War, they're definitely attacking. Like uh, uh, um, Thanos's army is attacking Wakanda. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it could be that that very place is the Soul Stone. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it could be the entire. Like, like I said, it could be a huge chunk part of the vibranium or yeah. the vi- like. It could be at the center of the meteorite, yeah. like you said. I yeah. Mean, and like I, I don't know. 
And Cause all we can do is all we can do is speculate at this on point. On top of being an amazing aloe or amazing metal that yeah. is like indestructible. It's indestructible, it's a power source. It's a power source and it causes super flowers to grow. Like vibraniums the vibranium it's 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 i think it's there i think it's very clear that there's something there yeah there's gotta be like i don't know i like that though i i think that's going to be the the big link why why you have that scene where there's just that army of four-armed what the fucks charging and you've got some of the characters them some of the avengers obviously in the after the credits we see um do we want to reveal that yeah, I mean, all right. The people, if you stay for after the credits, there's two scenes. There's like a mid credits scene that's another. It, it's the the non you know the non sequitur kind of funny. Uh, I don't even remember what it was at this point. Uh, Wasn't it part of the UN speech? Wasn't, oh, it was the UN speech. It was the that's UN right. speech. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there's a UN speech. That's that, and then, that's that's a halfway through like the comic credits before they yeah. get to the actual movie credits. Where and they're then, showing off the characters who played them and all that. Yep. Yeah. And then you sit through the incredibly long movie credits. Yeah. It, it, it especially was like, if you got to take a piss. It was like eight minutes, but for yeah. me, it was like 75 years. Because <laughs> I really had to piss. And I'm like, no, I'm going to see this scene. Yep. And it wasn't nearly as bad as when we went to Justice League, where I literally had to leave half. Yes. Like, I had to go do the movie. But anyway, we we're getting sidetracked here. So yeah, it was you know at the end of the scene, uh, you see it, Bucky. Well, yeah, yeah. They they you know they pan down on a on a. Well, no, they they pop up and it's from Bucky's perspective. There's just three kids sitting there looking at him. I love that they call him White Wolf. They're like playing around with him and stuff. And then uh, was it? It's a Shuri. 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 Yeah, Shuri. Shuri comes and is talking to him about like you know you you you're learning a lot. You still have some more to learn. Like, I have something for you. Yeah. And she gives him something, and I assume it's another arm. I think it's going to be a new. I think it's going to be Wait, a vibranium was it, arm. Wasn't it an arm? What didn't? I don't know. I don't even remember if they show what she had to give him. I no. don't think they show. I think they walked into the tent. Yeah. And it pans away. And it's kind of heavily implied she's basically giving him – because he has his arm gone. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't have the cybernetic arm. I think he's going to get – I think he's going to get an arm there. Yeah. And he's going to be a big part in, so, uh, obviously – Infinity War. Infinity War. Yeah. Man, going forward, man. Marvel. Guys, I got to say, when she – when they said – when when he was first referred to as White Wolf, my immediate reaction was, that man's not Geralt. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> Uh, I he you know what he can fucking be Carol. I don't care. He's awesome as fuck. He's not cool enough to be girl. He's. I want Bucky's character to. The, he was super cool in Civil War. Yeah, no, I, and I, mean, I, I like see. Him. I want to see that character expand. And if he has to become Cap, or if which, he becomes, which does happen, yeah, oh, for a while, the, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I, I, I'd like to see that. Um, Falcon. That's another thing. Is I honestly think Chris Evans is probably. If he's not dead after Infinity War Part Two, which I mean, I I honestly see Cap dying. I see Cap either dying or retiring. Yeah, and I want I, I would rather see them get give Bucky the mantle. Yeah, uh, than Falcon, unless they do something to make Falcon Falcon a super soldier. Right. I mean, because Falcon's I, great and all, but I, I don't I don't see him surviving. Uh, I think he'll survive. You I think, think so? for I think for sure Falcon will stick around just because he's. Unless they want to give Steve, uh, like, a reason to have a moment of, like, oh, like, my friend goes down. But, like I've said before, I think in Infinity War Part 1, like, 90% of the characters die and oh, are yeah. brought back in Part 2. Yeah, probably. Um, and I could be wrong about that, but I think that – I seriously think that's going to happen. But if someone's staying dead, I don't I don't know why you'd kill off the Falcon. As a character, he's not done much. Yeah. He's kind of like the new Hawkeye. That's why I could see him dying. E- yeah. I think they mean, should – I, I mean, just want to see him do something. I like that actor. Yeah, but uh, – uh, what's his name? Why can't I remember his name? Um, the actor? Or? Yeah, the actor. Not uh, – it it doesn't matter right this second, but um, yeah, it's like that's the only reason why I could see him dying, just because so far his character hasn't done a whole lot. So I mean, yeah, and I don't know if Marvel's killing off its villains, I could see Marvel killing off its fucking heroes too. And of course, Infinity War is one of those big events where you know. They die. People die, man. Anthony Mackie, yeah. yeah. Anthony Mackie, there you go. Yeah, I like him too. I like him a whole fight. Him and, and Don Cheadle, who, who, who plays. I'm uh, so I'm so afraid for uh, for because he's 
they show War Machine's suit in action. Yeah. I got to imagine Don Cheadle's coming back. Stop not using him. I love Don Cheadle. He's Don an Cheadle's amazing great. actor. Yeah. You've got him. And, Let War and, Machine be a badass. And please. War Machine War Machine was so fucking cool in the in the original TV show I grew up with. Yeah. Like he was he was right up there with Iron Man for a lot of the in, series. In the little bit of comics I've read in this like that you know, like you said, that T V show, War Machine is a fucking badass character. Yes, yes he is. Um Don Cheadle is an amazing actor, and even though they've made him less like like War Machine is just like he's not he's not Punisher, but he's pretty close. He's yeah. very militaristic in in the he's, comics he's, and the TV he, show. He's very does what needs to get done. Yeah, they, they he's not like that so much. I still love the way Don Cheadle portrays the character. Oh, absolutely, is a very cool. He's a foil to Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, I want to see them both do some awesome shit. And I'm I know, I just have this feeling he's fucking gone. He's so good. I get yeah, I, I am too. Like destroyed. I'm sad because I mean, like, I love the character, and like yeah. you said, I love the actor. I want to see him do more things. Yeah. Oh yeah. I I love the War Machine suit. I love man. I'm just afraid he's going to be out. Yeah. Other than him, though, I mean. Whatever. All right. Yeah. I think I think we should probably wind it down. Winding it down. Yeah. Because yeah. you know we're running a little bit long again. No big deal though. Oh well. Like yeah, we fun. said, guys, check out uh, Black Panther. Go. Yeah. See go. Go see it if you haven't seen it. If you have seen it, go see it anyway. Uh, you know. Next movie is Deadpool two. Yeah, Deadpool two. Uh, no, no. Uh, the next movie is Infinity War. And no, no, no. Then I Deadpool mean, two. Oh, is it? Okay, yeah, I couldn't. Yeah. I couldn't remember Deadpool which one. two I was, it was uh, between. That got delayed. Deadpool two got pushed back to like May eighteenth or something. So it's yeah. two weeks after Infinity War. So Infinity War is the next one. That we oh were talking my about that. God, I can't wait. Yeah, oh, dude, it's gonna be amazing. Yeah. All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and cut it off there, though. Hey, uh, but you know, like we forgot to pimp out last time. Check us out on uh, Facebook. Check the website out. Yeah, I mean, give us fine. a rating on iTunes. That would be like the biggest help you could do right now. And it's you know what? It's I mean, free. other than there's the Patreon too. That's awesome. That's like fuck yes. Thank you to the people who support us on Patreon. Give us you know give it's us awesome. a buck or two. You know, yeah. we, we got a, we got some supporters on there. We're going to be adding some uh, some new rewards and stuff soon. Yeah, you know, we bought things. a camcorder. Yeah, we bought a camcorder. <laughs> got the cam- tripod and stuff. We're going to set up a cam in like the corner of the studio so you can. Watch us do dumb shit before we do anything. It's yeah. going to be fun. But, yeah, but uh, you know, so go check us out. on godlygeeks.com. Find all the links to our social media there. we got a YouTube channel. You know, like, subscribe, share, all share, that. Share, spread it, spread the word. All that stuff that YouTubers always say to do. Because you know, it does <laughs> help out. Click that like button. Yeah, smash, smash that like button. Smash that like button. <laughs> all the other fucking terms they use. <laughs> um, ha- make sensual love to the like button. Who the fuck says that? I we do now. Okay, like fuck yes. it, why not? That's our thing. Make sweet, sweet love to that like button. Yeah. I'm gonna treat find it out treat it well. Treat it well and you know, she'll always she'll always treat you well in return. <laughs> Click it fuck that like button nice <laughs> fuck it fuck it uh fuck her gently. Fuck it gently. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, for the ungodly geeks, I was Joe. I was Luke. Fuck EA. Hey, fuck Konami.